Hey guys, today I'm talking about collecting acorns from the white oak tree and turning it into seedlings and onto saplings and onto a tree you can be proud to grow in your yard. So follow along and I'll show you every step along the way of how to take seed to a full size tree. So guys, when you're collecting your white oak acorns, you want to make sure you find ones that have really rich colors of brown in them. You want ones that have no holes or cracks, which could ind indicate damage or pest inf infestation. So just remember, you're looking for that rich brown and a really nice looking seed with no visible damage anywhere on it. So once you've collected your acorns and you want to get as many as possible because a certain percentage of them will not be viable and will not turn into oak trees. But you want to get some water and you just want to place the ones in there and the ones that float are probably not viable. Now these I've had for a long time and you can see that most of them are floating, which means they're either insect damage, hollow, or will not be viable. So this is a good demonstration of what will happen if you go to all the trouble of collecting seeds that have been outside for a while. Even though these have the right colors, I believe that there's been a lot of pest damage to them. So you want to toss those out if you see a lot of floating ones. The one down at the bottom there is the one that's most likely to be viable. So once you've tested your seeds and you've found the ones that are sinking to the bottom and you know they're most likely viable, you want to store them in your refrigerator if you're not planning on planting right away and put about a handful of either sand or peat moss into the bag with them and just leave that in there for a few months. You don't want to go a long time because the longer you wait to plant these seeds, the viability rate is going to drop. Now the peat moss in your bag that's going into the refrigerator should be damp but not waterlogged that will cause rot with the seeds so just spray them gently and also adding a teaspoon of hydrogen peroxide to the water will help the seeds viability and also stop any possible diseases that might be in the bag so hydrogen peroxide i've got a video i'll link about the many uses of hydrogen peroxide but that is one thing you want to do if you're putting them in the refrigerator for a couple of months and you can be assured that they'll be in a safe place so you want to check your acorns in the fridge about once a week for any mold or anything like that that may be growing in there that shouldn't be. Also, if you see any of your acorns sprouting, that means they are ready to be planted. And even if it's not the right time of year, you can plant them in small four inch pots like this and put them in an unheated basement or garage. And you can just slightly mist water them until it's time to take them outside in the springtime. Now, white oaks need a lot of room to grow, and I'll sprinkle some pictures of white oaks and how large they can get, but they will need to be away from buildings and other trees because they just need that room to spread as they get older. It may seem like it's a long way off, but once these trees start to get established, their growth rate can speed up. It seems to take forever for that to happen, but it will once they, in four to five years, you'll see a lot of growth. So just remember that process takes a lot of time in the beginning, but once they get established, growth is going to explode. So if you see those roots starting to sprout from your oak trees, you're going to want to either put them in pots like I have them here or directly in the ground. They prefer a pH soil from 6.0, 6.5, so slightly more acidic. So as you can see, I always recommend using a pH monitor. This will monitor temperature, moisture, and pH, and light. So it's a multi-use pH meter, and I use this all the time. It saves me a lot of time in the garden and a lot of guesswork. So anyways, if you're wanting to plant it directly in the ground, you want a lot of really rich soil. You want to take one third part homemade potting soil, and I'll link that up above, one third black cow and one third so it can be well-draining perlite that allows the soil to drain properly. And then I top it with 10% worm castings. Those four ingredients will help your white, white oaks off to a massively big head start will help their growth. I would say probably at least one foot wide and one foot deep to replace your existing soil because most native soils are not rich enough and this will speed up the growth of your white oak. So guys if you are open ground planting you want to do a drainage test which is a 30 minute test. You will dig a hole one foot wide and one foot deep, fill it with water and make sure that the soil will completely drain in 30 minutes. If it doesn't, it means that area may not be the best place, and it most likely is not. If it's going to be a waterlogged area, your oak tree will not do well. You'll have to get a tree that's more suited towards soggy soil. Okay, guys, so I'm going to mix our soil for our pot. One-third peat moss, one-third of our homemade potting mix, one-third perlite, and then we're going to top that with 10% of the worm castings. I'm going to carefully mix that by hand. Get it ready to go into our pot.
Now it's well mixed. And I'm just going to scoop it into our pot and fill it about, mm, about half away from the top of the edge of the pot. I'm going to firm down the soil a little bit. Now some people say to put it standing on its end, but I just lay it on its side as it would naturally happen in nature. And I put it just slightly under the soil surface. So that is how I start my acorns from seed in a four inch pot. And I think that's the best way to do it. And this is the perfect well draining, very nutritious soil mix. Now, if you opt not to plant in pots and you want to go directly into open ground, make sure you mark it. I like to mark it with these bamboo skewers and I can easily put a piece of tape at the top and write on it on a piece of painter's tape what I planted there. Because if you plant as much as I do, sometimes you just lose track of what you've done in the previous season. So just remember you want it well marked. Another thing is, is you want to protect it from squirrels. Squirrels are very well known and also ground squirrels are well known to dig around in the soil looking for acorns. So make sure that you cover it and protect it. If you use a wire mesh and the tree grows through it, it may be a little bit harder to remove that mesh. So you might want to use something like a plastic bird mesh that you see on a lot of trees. And that way you can easily cut it and remove it if the tree comes growing through those small mesh squares. So just remember, you want to make sure that it's easily to remove. Now, again, if you've planted it in open ground, you're going to have a little bit more difficult time monitoring depending on where you've located it on your property. But if you want to make sure that the soil remains consistently moist but not waterlogged, what I like to do when planting in small pots is to put it on top of a lunchroom tray. You can buy these anywhere from restaurant supplies or online. I can always link that down below. But these are really shallow, and so you can do a little bit of underwatering just water the tray itself and it'll be absorbed through, through the pot itself. Just remember not to overwater in this tray. You don't want it sitting in water all the time, but just adding a little bit of water once a week and monitoring, make sure it's about maybe about a quarter of an inch deep. But this is a great way to do it because you can water multiple plants at one time without having to worry about did it get enough water. It's wicking it up to the base of the pot so you'll know that it's got just the right amount of water. Now, one thing I like to use for mulch on my, all my potted plants and even in open ground is a product called Soil Conditioner. It can be purchased at Lowe's and it's very finely ground pine bark and it can be used just perfectly in this size pot. I just sprinkle it on top of the pots and it will hold in moisture. If there's any weed seeds that was in the soil, then this will also help prevent that from sprouting and growing, but it'll, it'll really help the plant overall. Now, young saplings of white oak trees prefer the soil to be consistently moist, but not waterlogged. So you want to use the monitor to your pH monitor, water monitor, light monitor. You want to use this to make sure that the soil is not too saturated. So that's one thing that's going to help prevent the failure of your sapling is by carefully monitoring the soil conditions and how much water it has. Now, your saplings most likely will not need a lot of support, but if they appear to be falling over and the leaves are a little bit on the heavy side, you might wanna use that bamboo skewer that you originally, originally used to mark where you planted it and put it in the ground and just do use a bread tie and carefully tie it. And that way it'll have a little bit of support and it won't fall over quite as easy. Also, once it gets a little bit larger, you can use just a piece of bamboo itself. And that way you can, these come in quite a few different sizes at the big box store. So you can stake it way up, but most likely it won't need a lot of support. But in just in case it does, starting it out with a little bamboo uh, barbecue skewer, that can really be an aid to the plant in the beginning. Now these oak leaves, I do see some damage and I probably should have already sprayed them. I can see something's been eating here and there, but most, mostly they're pretty healthy. But I will say I've created a video previously that will talk all about creating a completely all natural organic pesticide and that is what you need to just gently spray on it i'll link it up above but just remember you want to monitor that because i do see it looks like some leaf miners and maybe some other worms have been on the oak trees since they've been sitting outside now during the first year you don't really have to add any fertilizer because the acorn and the soil mixture we put together is going to be enough fertilization the second year is when you want to start thinking about fertilizing these are now going into their second year. These are in their first year. And so these are about to be fertilized and these have another year to go, but the soil is really rich. We have the worm casting in there, which acts kind of like as a very light, slow release fertilizer. So just remember the second year is when you're going to want to start thinking about fertilization. Now the ideal time to transplant these are going to be early spring. If you're going into open ground or in a larger pot, just remember to be very careful. The root ball, you want to transfer that whole root ball to the new the new location and just be gentle with it but just remember 
early spring when it's still in its dormancy is the best time to transplant. Now your saplings are gonna need about six hours of direct sunlight. And if they seem to be struggling in the area you have them, it may be that the pots themselves are getting too hot. So that's one thing to consider is putting some straw around the pots as long as they can con get, continue to get that sunlight. But if they continue to struggle, even after you do something like that, you might wanna move them to a shaded area until that hottest part of the summer passes and then you can move them back out to a sunny spot. Now, speaking about transferring them back and forth between sun and shade areas, you don't want the saplings to be in shade a lot because that will hinder their growth. They need that six hours. So just remember, you can use something like a, a uh, sun calculator. You can put it right to where they're at. I'll link it below what it looks like. I just just pop, bought my second one because I misplaced my first one somewhere along the way, but it's a great item to have when you're trying to calculate how many hours of sunlight does a specific spot in your garden get. And it's only about 20 to $30, depending if you get it in in season or off season. So I got mine in the off season and I'm getting a little bit of a discount. Now, just remember if your soil is too alkaline, you want to add more peat moss to bring down the acidity because it needs to be between six and 6.5. And you can monitor that in your soil because soil can change over time when you're adding fertilizer. And it's just one of those things that you need to keep track of as your saplings grow. Now, just as a general rule, you can use lime to raise and sulfur to low. Just, rem just remember that your pH, lime to raise the pH, sulfur to lower it. Now, if you're not bringing the saplings in during the winter, you wanna make sure you protect them with quite a bit of mulch. Like I said earlier, pine straw or just regular straw, quite, com quite healed up around it, will protect it from those extreme temperatures. But I would recommend for the first two years, bringing it into a garage or unheated basement is gonna be your best bet there. As far as pruning your saplings, you wanna do light pruning only when there's a dead or diseased branch. So just let them grow naturally those first two or three years. So if you do decide to do a little bit of pruning on diseased or dead branches, you wanna make sure that you sterilize your tool with Listerine or its generic equivalent. I just buy the generic version of Listerine at the dollar store and just spray down my cutters. And that way I know that I'm not transferring a disease from one plant to the other. So that's one of those things that can help you in the garden. So if you're planning to keep your oak leaf saplings in containers, I wanted to demonstrate the different sizes of grow bags. Now these are just your common grow bags. They're very inexpensive. This is a 25 gallon. And so that way, you can move these quite easy. I always recommend the grow bags because they're so much easier. They breathe better. And in the winter time, if you do leave them outside, you can just give them that protection with mulch. But I'll link all these below, but that is one thing. These are about to be upsized into a large, larger grow bag about this size, which is about five to seven gallons, I believe. I've forgotten the size. But anyways, we're going to upsize these today and have them ready to go back out in the garden throughout the winter. So just a note, and this is probably not even something I need to say, but white oaks are deciduous and they are going to lose their leaves in the winter. Most oaks do this. Now there is a live oak that grows in Florida and it's an amazing tree. I still wish I had one, but I've, I lost it many years ago to an extreme heat situation we had. But they will lose their leaves in the winter and then they'll come back every spring a little better. Now, once they're in open ground, you want to make sure that you remove the leaves around from around the base of the tree to prevent any type of fungal issues because rotting leaves may create a problem for your sapling. So just remember, removing those leaves back, back from about one to two foot away from the trunk and then coming in with the soil conditioner will really help the tree. Remember, at the base of the tree, once it's in the ground, you want to leave a little small gap between your soil conditioner and the actual trunk of the tree to prevent rot from occurring right there at the base. So in the second year of your saplings, you want to use a balanced 10-10-10 or something like that. Slow release fertilizer. I like Osmocote that comes in different types, but it's a really good quality slow release fertilizer that you can put in the pots. Once it becomes a little larger and the leaves really start to grow, you know you got some root activity going on and you can go to a Bloom Plus which has a very high phosphorus count, NPK, the P being phosphorus, is gonna help stimulate the roots. And I would recommend doing that again after the first year. The second year, you can start the fertilization schedule about once a month during the growing season, the second year. So as your white oak grows in the ground, you want to regularly inspect it, the leaves to see for any curling, discoloration. Could, it could mean a disease or pest is attacking your tree. So you just wanna do that because sometimes these things occur so rapidly you can lose it. So just a good regular inspection of your tree will help you know what to do every step along the way. 
If you do find those things, go back to the video I showed you earlier about removing pests organically as a natural solution to the problem. So if it's been a few years since you planted it and it's been growing in a pot, you have to consider carefully where you're going to place this oak tree. An oak tree can easily outlive us. It can grow for hundreds of years. So that's one thing to take into consideration is just to carefully think about where you're planting it too close to a house or too close to other trees. Just remember these are very long lived trees and they will most likely outlive us outside of a storm lightning or something or man-made cutting it down something like that so just remember you want that tree to be in its perfect location with sunlight and proximity to other objects around it so guys i hope you'll consider planting an oak tree on your property they really are majestic beautiful trees and although the growth initially is going to seem slow once they get established that can be really rapid and before you know it you'll have a very beautiful shade tree in your property for many years and it'll probably be there for many many years so anyways I want to say thanks so much for watching. If you found something helpful, please like and subscribe. If I left something out, please let me know in the comments. I really appreciate it. Have a great day, guys.